Well, good morning, and thank you all once again for joining us this morning. Today is Tuesday, April 21st, 2020. I'm Melissa Pache. I'm the CEO of the Whistler Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to acknowledge that we are having this virtual meeting on the shared unceded traditional territories of the Squamish and Lilawat nations. We honor their language, culture, and traditions. Today's advocacy in action session is focused on the latest support available through the federal government Canada's COVID-19 Economic Response Plan and the latest support available for our business community. With us today from Ottawa, we are honoured to have Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Small Business and Export Promotions and International Trade, Rachel Bendayan, and from West Vancouver, our MP Patrick Weiler, covering West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast and Sea to Sky Country. I'd like to thank all of our members for your continued support to the, ch uh, the Chamber receives through your annual memberships and commitments enabling us to do the important work that we do to support you. The purpose of the Advocacy in Action webinar is to ensure that you, our members, and the broader business community in Whistler have the opportunity to have the most pressing questions answered by experts and officials who will provide guidance and support for you to navigate these very challenging times. We encourage you to take part in this session by asking your questions via our interactive sorry, interactive <laughs> Zoom Q&A. And you can do so by going to the Q&A section on your screen. For most of you, it'll be at the very bottom, says Q&A, click that. And you can add in your questions um, as we go along. And also, you can also hit the, the like button, which will upvote a question, which will then automatic, automatically be placed as the most voted to the top. To give some context for this discussion, I've received the results from the latest BC Chamber uh, Pulse Check Survey, BC-wide, the COVID-19 crisis is deepening the British Columbia businesses by, with 43% of those surveyed, stating they can only continue to operate for up to three months under the current conditions and, and restrictions. For businesses temporarily closed, the future is similarly dire, with only 53 expecting to reopen once the restrictions are eased uh, on workplace operations, while 38% are unsure and 8% uh, will not reopen. That's in BC. Now, bringing it uh, to Whistler, 82% of those surveyed are showing a drop in sales volume with 73% saying their revenue has dropped by 75% or more. 63% laid off employees, 65 have temporarily closed, while 2% have permanently closed. So that kind of gives you a bit of a context around where our discussion might go today. So with this in mind, I would first like to introduce Patrick and who will then introduce um, our Parliamentary Secretary, Rachel Bendayan. It's my pleasure to first introduce you to Patrick. Patrick is an environmental and natural resource manager lawyer with deep roots in West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky Country, growing up in both West Vancouver and Seashelt. During his career, he has supported governments around the globe to improve the management of aquatic ecosystems, as well as the governance of natural resource sectors on behalf of the United Nations and other international development agencies. Patrick has represented First Nations, municipalities, small businesses, and non-for-profits on uh, environmental and corporate legal matters within his, this riding throughout British Columbia and around the world. So Patrick, why don't you get started here? Thank you. Well, um, <clears throat> well, well thank you for the, for the kind introduction, Melissa, and um, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'd just like to thank the, the Chamber for organizing this and, uh, and for, for everybody for attending this. It's great to speak to you again today, um, just I guess about three weeks after the, the last meeting that we, uh, that we had. Um, I just want to have a quick introduction here. Um, I know this is a very difficult time for, for our community and, and particularly for business. Um, and really the, the recent survey, survey results Melissa spoke of really highlights this. And, and for this reason, we've been working as, as hard as we can and as fast as we can to, to roll out uh, immediate relief programs to support businesses to, to get through this time. Um, I'm just going to quickly give a, a, a short overview of some of the measures and then uh, pass it over to my uh, distinguished colleague to, to go into a little bit more detail. But um, our first focus was making sure that people have money in their pockets to pay for, for food and put a roof over their head. Uh, for this reason, we rolled out the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, which is a $2,000 a month benefit um, for, for those that were, are without income. We loosened the eligibility recently, so now you can earn up to $1,000 a month and still get this. Um, for businesses, we, we're in the process of rolling out the emergency wage subsidy, 
which will be a 75% wage subsidy to help businesses keep people on. Uh, we're helping with access to credit through the emergency business account, which is a $40,000 no interest loan, um, as well as other measures through the uh, business credit avail availability program from Export Development Canada and the Business Development Bank of Canada. Um, the, there is some commercial rent relief that is being worked on with the provinces. I'll let Rachel speak a little bit more about that. Um, and there's, there's some announcements on Friday for uh, some of the sector specific supports that are starting to roll out and, and that was first with respect to energy. Um, tourism has been highlighted as a key area um, where I would expect some news to be coming very soon. Um, as also as part of the announcement on Friday, uh, there was about a billion dollars that's been allocated to different regional economic development agencies and the Community Futures Network. So this will be really important for, for uh, those organizations which are quite close to, to um, businesses at the local level. So I, I don't want to go into, any further into the details myself. Um, and with, at this time, I'm, I'm very pleased to introduce my distinguished colleague, um, Rachel Bendayan, who is, who is a much better place to do so. So Rachel was first elected as a member of parliament for Outremont in uh, February of last year. Rachel is a fellow lawyer and uh, McGill alum. Uh, Rachel built a successful legal practice at one of the world's leading law firms, Norton Rose Fulbright, working in the fields of litigation and international arbitration, with a, with a specialization in international trade law for, for over a decade. Rachel has also taught at the Université de Montréal in the Faculty of Law. Um, and and uh, Rachel really is the best place to, to be speaking to you about some of the supports that we're bringing on. Before being elected, she spent three years working as the chief of staff to the uh, federal minister of small business and tourism. So after being re-elected this year, Rachel has been appointed as the parliamentary secretary uh, to the minister for small business, export promotions and international trade. As a parliamentary secretary, she is the right hand person to the minister. Um, and I can tell you that Rachel has been doing an incredible job uh, working with our caucus, taking a lot of the difficult questions from myself and some of my colleagues, and working with businesses right across the country. Um, Rachel, of course, has taken on a special role during, during the pandemic, and uh, it's my uh, distinct pleasure to be able to in introduce her now. Thank you so much, Patrick. Uh, very, very kind of you. Uh, good, um, Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good morning uh, in, in Vancouver. Thank you to the Whistler Chamber of Commerce for hosting the call. And um, really a, a special thanks to, to your member of Parliament, um, Patrick Wheeler. So you should know, everybody on this call should know that Patrick fights uh, for you every day. Uh, he fights for the people of his riding, of course, uh, West Vancouver, Sunshine Coast, Sea to Sky Country, um, but also for all of the businesses in, in Whistler. You're very lucky to have such a strong advocate uh, represent you in the House of Commons and, and have had uh, the opportunity to, to work a bit with Patrick on making sure that some of our small business supports respond to the needs of uh, Whistler businesses, but I know that there's more work to do. And so when he invited me onto this call, uh, I, I took the opportunity to not only learn more about um, your reality on the ground, uh, but also uh, hopefully to, uh, to tweak uh, again, some of uh, the measures that we've put in place. So I'll, I'll maybe go briefly over uh, the federal uh, supports that we have in place for, for small businesses, but I'd like to leave as much time as possible for, for questions. So I'll try and do it uh, quite quickly. If there is one thing that you take away from this call, though, it, it really is that the federal government would like to do everything in its uh, power to make sure that our businesses come out on the other side of this crisis. And as you've seen, I'm, I'm sure uh, from the, the daily press conferences and uh, media reports, we are adjusting as we go. I like to describe it as uh, building the plane as we're flying it. I, I know that it's not an ideal situation, but I think in a crisis context, this is exactly what governments should be doing in order to respond uh, as quickly as possible to the needs uh, of Canadians. 
So let me start with the emergency wage subsidy because it is uh, one of the programs that uh, I think uh, most uh, of our businesses are, are looking forward to um, to applying. Um, so Monday, uh, April 27th, we'll have the portal open on Canada.ca uh, for businesses to apply for the wage subsidy. As Patrick mentioned, it's a 75% um, subsidies for uh, for wages up to a certain maximum. And today. Uh, a calculator is being uh, unveiled and you'll find the link probably on Patrick's and mine, uh, my social media. So uh, please do check that out. The calculator is obviously just intended for you to get a better understanding before Monday of how much your business uh, will be able to receive in terms of a subsidy. Um, let me also just uh, touch briefly on the Canada Emergency Business Account, which uh, is uh, there to provide small businesses with interest-free loans of $40,000. Up to $10,000 of this uh, loan is, uh, is forgivable if uh, the business pays back the loan uh, balance by December 2022. And so I, I, hear, I hear you. Uh, there are, I've been speaking speaking to many, many entrepreneurs, as you can imagine, over the course of the last few weeks. And I understand that there is a, a lot of reticence uh, in taking on debt. Uh, so this is a government-backed, uh, interest-free loan uh, that includes 25% um, uh, uh, of the loan could be uh, completely forgiven. So uh, I, I, I'm not sure if many people on this call have contacted their local banks yet, but uh, approximately um, 313,000 businesses have already been approved for this loan through their regular banks or credit unions across the country. And um, we've actually changed the, the, the criteria for this loan in order for more small business to, to be able to access it. So I'll be happy to expand further if there are questions on that. But I, I hope that it is something uh, that um, all of your members are aware of and, and are tapping into. Um, as uh, as Patrick mentioned, we, we came out recently uh, with an announcement regarding the Canada Emergency Rent Assistance Program. The Prime Minister mentioned uh, this program in one of his daily press conferences. Is essentially, because uh, the relationship between uh, a tenant and landlord uh, is provincial jurisdiction, we are in the middle of negotiating with provinces in order to be able to, to roll out this program. Uh, as you can uh, appreciate, I'm sure everybody on this call um, is certainly in the situation where uh, between uh, your salaries and, and your wages and, and rent, we're looking at there as it's probably your two biggest uh, fixed costs. So uh, this is incredibly important for, for us to, to land and we're, we're working very hard with our, our premiers across the country on making sure that we, we can roll out these um, these measures as quickly as possible. So um, again, happy to take questions uh, on the rent assistance program, but the vast majority of the details are, are still uh, being worked out. Um, I, I, I guess I, I would just want to mention some of the smaller programs that uh, that are certainly uh, very important because they're they're aiming to to reach those that might otherwise uh, you know fall through the cracks with with the major initiatives that we've put in place. For example, uh, Futurepreneur, um, who is helping a lot of our very young entrepreneurs, uh, has just received additional funding. As Patrick mentioned, our our regional develop organizations also have uh, funding directed to them in order to help our very small businesses and so um, again you know the objective being that uh, we should help everybody and, and try and be as inclusive uh, as possible I think I'll wrap it up there uh, in order to leave as much time as possible for questions but um, certainly happy to, to be joining you on this call and if uh, you have regular calls happy to join you again in the future and um, I guess with that over to you Melissa great thank you Rachel so much that was a great update for us um, Already we're getting some questions uh, around the wage subsidy. Ben Thomas has been a local in our community for a very long time. Um, his first question is, please elaborate on how the 75% wage subsidy actually works specifically on businesses should make uh, best effort to top employees up to 100%. 
Sure. So uh, essentially, the, the wage subsidy is is going to be provided after um, the company pays their employees. So that's something that uh, that I think is important to, to note uh, in, in order to ensure uh, as, a, as a government that the money is going to employees. This is one of the, the, the checks uh, and balances uh, that we've included in, into the program. Uh, the uh, pre-crisis salary for your employees is going to be used as the baseline and it can go up to 75% uh, of that with, uh, with, a, with a maximum. Employers are obviously encouraged to top up the remaining 25%, but that is not a requirement of the program. Uh, you know, we are hoping if a company is uh, able to uh, provide the remaining 25% to their employees that they will, but it's not a criteria. Um, we're still obviously working on um, the interactions between the emergency relief benefit, which is uh, uh, the $2,000 flat benefit that many uh, people uh, are, are already getting and the, and the wage subsidy. But I mean, I'm, I'm happy to, to answer those specifics uh, offline if there are any. And, and um, uh, I guess the, the last point that I, I would just make about um, you know about the application process it is opening up on monday um and and we are hoping uh, I, I believe it was announced today that in in short order uh after that uh, money will will begin to flow um so the objective being uh you know uh, to, to wrap this up in the next uh, few weeks so that money can can be in your accounts as soon as possible that's great, Rachel. I know that's one of the biggest issues having right now is not having enough sufficient cash inflow. So the more, the faster this can happen, obviously, the better for the business community. On that note, I did get a question sent to me earlier on that topic, but it's if businesses bring employees back to work and transition them from CERB, Canada's Emergency Response Benefit, to Canada's Emergency Wage Subsidy, how does that affect the money people have already received from CERB? Um, and will they have to pay that money back? I think for the period in which the employee was not receiving any revenue, um, you know, it, it is justified for them to uh, to, to keep the, the money that they had while they were not receiving a salary. But once they start re receiving their uh, their their wages, uh, their revenue, they know they are no longer eligible for for the CERB. Right. Uh, so as you know um, the, the CERB is the emergency relief benefit that that you can access if you. Um, uh, you know, if if you aren't making a revenue, so so once you're back on the on the payroll, um, you would have to stop uh, your your CERB payments. And there is an online portal where you can uh, quite easily, I'm told, uh, deactivate your your CERB um, okay. your your emergency relief benefit uh, request. Great. Um, from uh, Priyanka Lewis, um, she has uh, several restaurants in uh, Whistler. With regards to tourism sector, would this be regional help? Um, sorry, would this be regional help? Would that include F and B, or is it for tourism sectors such as hotels and airlines? Um, our our uh, restaurant, uh, food and beverage um, sector is being hit equally as hard as everyone, but there, there's a lot of food and beverage uh, businesses in our community, so hence where the question might be coming from. Sure, I mean, I know that the food and beverage industry had uh, some difficulty uh, previously accessing BDC loans and supports, and I just wanted to, to put in a plug for the BDC that they've, they've changed that so that, um, you know, regardless of, uh, you know of, of the profits that might uh, be engendered from from liquor or, or otherwise uh, they are now eligible for all of BDC supports um, with respect to the regional development agencies there was um, as Patrick mentioned in his introduction uh, a, a uh, almost uh, $1 billion uh, for uh, our regional development agencies and community futures. Um, and, and that money is really intended for, for the businesses that are unable to, to receive uh, some of the other supports. Um, I, I mentioned before the $40,000 loans. In order to access the $40,000 loans, you need a payroll of, of at least 
uh, $20,000 and, and some very, very small um, businesses, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of, uh, you know, the small boutiques or, or tourist stores uh, that you might have in Whistler from, from memory when I was there last. Um, you know, if, if the $20,000 payroll is, is something that is a hindrance, um, we've, we've introduced this, this, these additional um, these additional men measures in order to address that. Uh, I know that Minister uh, Jolie is, is working uh, on that at the moment, and I know Patrick uh, is, in, is in touch with her, but uh, I think we'll get the details of that either later this week, uh, if not early next week, um, but, but hopefully uh, sooner rather than later so that uh, you have the details. That's great. Uh, will there be an opportunity for wage subsidy extensions uh, past June 6th? Do you know that at this point? At this point, it's obviously difficult to predict uh, what the future will hold. It's hard to imagine mm -hmm. what um, what our world will look like in, in June. But there is uh, a provision in the legislation that we passed uh, last Saturday uh, over Easter weekend in the House of Commons, which allows for a further extension. So that flexibility is there for us to extend if needed. Great. Um, regarding the 75%, uh, please clarify that the money will be paid to the employer now and not credited to our account for when we file the T4s in February 2021. Uh, no, certainly uh, not uh, in February. We are very, uh, very well aware that it is uh, impossible for our businesses at the moment to be paying uh, wages and, uh, and and other expenses uh, in the hopes of only getting reimbursed in 2021. So that is not the plan. Um, but uh, but rather the government would be paying back uh, our, our employers uh, as quickly as, as possible. But again, I believe that there is some checks and balances worked into the system so that the employer would just have to uh, provide, uh, you know, uh, documentation or otherwise show that they have paid their employees and at that point um, they would get reimbursed from the government. Right. I just want to step into one other a question I've been receiving from uh, entrepreneurs, solopreneurs. Will there be support for businesses that don't qualify for the current offerings? So as an example, for the solopreneurs they, who have independent contractors and not employees, what sort of support are they expected to see come through in the next uh, short time? If there is something. Yeah, I, I, I must say that my heart breaks every time I speak to a solo printer because there there is a lot of um, there are a lot of prog programs that they're not currently eligible for. But that that is in part why we we have um, put funding into our regional development agencies and community futures. Uh, they are actually the target for that new funding. So uh, as soon as we get those details, I'll make sure um, you know that uh, that Patrick shares them uh, with you. But our emergency relief benefit was there. Um, and, and you know, uh, the Minister of Small Business and I and, and others pushed very hard for that emergency relief benefit to be available to uh, all of our uh, you know contract workers, our, our entrepreneurs, you know, re regardless of what um, you know what, what particular uh, uh, you know stature they have. Uh, as long as uh, you make uh, a revenue and, and you're no longer making a revenue due to the crisis, you're, you're eligible for that $2,000 a month. Um, and so that that is there, of course, for our solopreneurs. But I understand that they also need help with operating costs. And, and that's something that we're working on with the Rent Assistance Program and with this new funding for our regional development agencies. Great. And I know that you're only with us till 1030. So I'll take the last two questions here. Um, does the wage subsidy allow us to recover wages we have paid to employees since March 15th? And what if they have applied for EI uh, or CERB as they are only working part-time instead of full-time? So that's a great question. Uh, yes, it's retroactive to March 15th. And I think there is a bit of confusion around whether or not the uh, the employees have to be uh, working actively. And, and let me just clarify that there are a lot of businesses for whom, uh, you know, the, the doors are closed and, and people are either working 
working from home a few hours or in some cases not at all and you are still eligible for the wage subsidy even if your employees aren't currently working the idea is to keep your your business family together to keep your employees uh, as part of uh, of your team and therefore uh, ready to go as soon as uh, these measures are lifted um, so that you don't have to start rehiring uh, folks back that your team is intact and so you can um, be paying your employees uh, uh, Again, uh, up to 100% if you can, if not uh, the 75% that will be reimbursed by the government, even if they are uh, not working at the moment. Great. Uh, one of the sorry, go one ahead. Of the, one of the quick changes. Yeah, uh, one of the quick changes that we made to the emergency relief benefit is that you can continue uh, to uh, make a little bit of money either through contracts or we also had, uh, the, you know, the case of certain artists who were telling us that they have, you know, small royalties coming in during the month. So uh, just so that everybody on the call is aware, you are still in entitled to the emergency relief benefit, even if you make up to $1,000 per month. So if you are, are working um, a couple of hours here and there, or if you, uh, you know, are, are making minimum wage and, um, and fall under $1,000 a month in revenue, you're still eligible for the $2,000 flat uh, emergency relief benefit. Is the $1,000 gross revenue? Yes. Okay. And last question, because I know you've got to go. You've got a very busy schedule. So uh, from Ian Lowe, who's the general uh, manager at the Hilton Hotel up here in Whistler, um, we are concerned about the 13-week threshold for temporary layoffs being uh, considered constructive dismissal, thus all companies having to deal with severance. And, and you and I and Patrick talked about that in our pre-conference uh, chat the other day. Um, what can we do as, as um, well, what can we do as a chamber to further lobby this potential issue? So I can answer that in knowing that the BC Chamber, Val Litwin and his team are already working uh, very urgently with the uh, BC government to lobby for this. Is this something that the federal government can also weigh in on? It's, it's really a provincial regulation and so it's not it's not in the federal jurisdiction to um, to change this uh, you know obviously happy to, uh, to to make sure that our colleagues and you know maybe I'll let Patrick jump in uh, add their voice uh, to um, you know to the mix in order to uh, speak to our uh, our local provincial representatives uh, out west but it, it is something uh, that is of provincial jurisdiction. Sure. Do you have time for one more quick question? <laughs> Keep you there. Uh, sure, will they, with the with uh, this rental measure, uh, will they be loan based for landlord? So uh, although it hasn't, uh, it hasn't, as I mentioned, completely landed yet, we, we are talking about uh, both loans and or forgivable loans to commercial yeah. property owners. And then, the, and then the idea being that the property owners um, would uh, provide in turn uh, their business tenants with rent reductions for uh, April, May, and June. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we're looking at it being retroactive for the month of May, uh, for the month of April, which is great news, and uh, and very soon for May and June. Um, I'm hoping that it'll be out before before May first. But again, we're not entirely in control of the situation, so we are dependent on our on our colleagues at the provincial level for this. But we're working very hard in order to ensure that you have the rent relief that you need. I know I know how important that is, and and how how big a, a cost it is to to everybody. Yes. Um, Rachel, I want to thank you. I know you have to go. Um, so honored to have you uh, with us for, for a short time, but we'd love to have you back. Um, and I hope when we have you back, it's talking about recovery efforts. So thank you to you and your team um, and the ministry in what you're doing for small business right now. So thanks again. Uh, Patrick is going to stay with us to answer some of the other questions that we have in our Q&A. So hold tight uh, with the audience. And uh, Rachel, thank you again. If you have any last words, for our, our members. Thank you so much. I just wanted to thank you, Melissa, for just uh, not, not only organizing this call, but being such a great to be able to work with partners like you. And, and if uh, 
you or, or, or your members would like to put together, you know, a letter or even just an email, it doesn't have to be uh, very fancy. I'm happy uh, to take to take that back uh, and work with Patrick in order to make sure that the Minister of Small Business, but also the Minister of Finance is aware of all of the needs of your members and, and our small businesses out in Whistler. Well, we'll flood Patrick with emails now. <laughs> Are you ready for this? <laughs> Rachel, thank you so much to you and your team. And uh, we'll stay in touch. I will send you the BC Chamber uh, results, uh, the survey results to you directly so you have them. So thanks again. Um, and now we will move over. Thank to you, Rachel. Uh, yeah, thanks, Rachel. So Patrick, we've got some uh, quite a few questions still to be answered. Um, so we'll continue with yourself. Um, Alistair Cray is the general manager of uh, Whistler Cooks, and uh, he also sits on our uh, advocacy committee. How will the Qs, CEWS, uh, help long term as we build to recover business uh, that will see much more than 30% drop in revenue long after June 6th? Yeah, well, maybe just touching on what Rachel mentioned earlier, the, uh, the, the legislation that, that was passed um, would allow for these programs to be extended. Um, it is something right now that, you know, it's developments are changing on the hourly and, and, and daily level. I, I know when specifically we're, we're talking about Whistler, um, the, the, the impacts to a lot of businesses are going to be more drawn out. Um, it's not going to be until, until, um, in, until we have the same level of tourism again that a lot of those businesses are going to be able to recover. So um, this is something that these are active discussions we're having within our caucus on, on how do we better support a lot of those businesses that are, that are very much tourism dependent. Um, and one of the, the things that one of the ideas that is being talked about is having the wage subsidy be extended, especially for businesses that work in that, in that uh, sector. So, um, so this is, this is an ongoing discussion that's happening. Um, I, I know from, um, I'm part of a, an all party tourism caucus where this is one of the, the main things that we've been advocating for. Um, at, at this point, the, it's the, the supports that have been brought in are just general to apply for all businesses. But like I mentioned on, um, earlier in, in my, my opening, some of the sector specific supports are starting to be rolled out now that we've had the, the general supports. Um, that that have been uh, announced, and so um, this is one particularly that would be really really important for for a lot of businesses in tourism and hospitality. Um, and I'm hoping we can have a little bit more to talk about very soon on this. Uh, and, and like Rachel said, uh, we may have some more news on specific supports for the sector later this week or early next week. Great. No, that's really good. Um, Anna Holdsworth is asking a question. I believe it's got to do with this wage subsidy is uh, what documents information should we have on hand to make the application process as smooth as possible? Interesting, because I Google search 75% wage subsidy because the chamber obviously is one of the same, so we can retain our staff. Um, and I found a whole bunch of information that was pretty straightforward on, um, on Canada.ca. Um, I don't know exactly what... Um, um, link it was but uh do you do you know specifically where i would have found that <laughs> yeah well I, I mean everything that we have with respect to the to the coronavirus pandemic it's it's all on the same the same um site it's canada.ca slash coronavirus and so it, it should have all the links that that you need there um it it um, separates the different programs we have for individuals for for businesses for for farmers um, and, and other stakeholder groups um, from there, they, they should have the appropriate links. The announcement early today that uh, there will be a calculator so you can see how much of the wage subsidy you're going to be able to receive. Um, I, I, haven't, I haven't had a chance to look at that on the site, what, what exactly that looks like. Um, but as Rachel said, the, the application is going to be open as of uh, Monday. Yeah, so I I, calculator, like I've looked at it this morning, and it seems fairly straightforward. I haven't taken a big deep dive into it, but um, I like how they've laid it out on the website. It's, it's, it's pretty streamlined. Mm -hmm. So I will, um, I can, I can look into exactly what those documents might be. That's, that uh, you would want to make sure that you have at your disposal. Um, uh, keeping in mind that so you can apply as of, as of Monday. Yeah. Um, excuse me. Um, Karen Bote, it, it is, it has been previously mentioned that an individual cannot double dip on the serve and cues. 
in the instance that a staff member receives the CERB yet is working to receive up to their $1,000, is the employer still able to claim that $1,000 on the queues? That's question. So can we, yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, so um, Rachel mentioned this earlier as well. Um, there, and, and this has been, been an ongoing discussion about um, how are you able to reconcile both of them when you have um, when you have someone that's collecting the emergency response benefit, but they want to um, you're going to want to trans transition them to the wage subsidy. So um, the maybe the first thing I would mention is the the employer itself wouldn't be the one receiving the emergency response benefit. That would go directly to the to the individual. Um, but uh, I, I know there there are some processes that are being um, worked out to to reconcile those two. For the emergency response benefit, there are several different periods that you can claim it for. The, the first one is just, um, it would be beginning on March 15th. So for those first two weeks, um, given that a lot of businesses are having uh, challenges with, with payroll right now, I know of a lot of businesses that have furloughed employees, but they're still working and then they're collecting the emergency response benefit. Um, and uh, they're going to be able to collect the wage subsidy further down the road. And actually collecting the emergency response benefit isn't going to to um, uh, disqualify them, but that's going to be reconciled down the road through processes that haven't fully been worked out yet. Um, but uh, but I expect those details to be coming out very soon um, as uh, as we we uh, roll out the emergency wage subs uh, subsidy. And we're we're communicating with our members and the broader business community every mo Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So what we can do is once you receive updates on a regular basis, we'll just keep loading them into our portal and uh, communicate that to our members. So that's great. Thank you. Um, after uh, sorry, are there provisions for a January startup business to qualify for the forty thousand k loan if uh, it cannot show a two thousand nineteen T four report despite twenty twenty payroll meet eligibility criteria? Mm -hmm. Well, this is um, uh, this is what uh, I mean, Rachel mentioned earlier. That's one of the main um, recipients of the support through the uh, regional economic development agencies and community futures network. That that will be able to help a lot of businesses that that are not able to to receive the the the, the, the emergency business account. So I would I would first direct people to to look at that. Um, I I know that, that there is some the the eligibility requirements are a little bit restricted right now and, and I have been having constant chats with uh, with Rachel and other people in caucus about about uh, expanding that um, for um, you know it's it's not not only uh, those that are starting up early in in January but those that are potentially there um, rather than employing staff they they use contractors. I think some of those distinctions can be a little bit arbitrary. So um, it is something that uh, there, there are ongoing discussions about how we broaden the eligibility um, beyond uh, simply just having, uh, you know, having your uh, 2019 payroll be between 20,000 and 1.5 million. Uh, but currently they wouldn't be eligible for that um, specific benefit. Right. Uh, there's a question I had uh, sent to me earlier. Is the government considering extending the timeline for wage subsidy for tourist-based companies, or based economies such as Whistler, that are now basically closed for business? Um, so wondering if that's been discussed or if that's something that uh, will be discussed? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this, this is discussions that uh, we're having in caucus. Uh, this is, um, you know, Mayor Crompton and I have been talking about this for a while, um, and likewise, different discussions with with different businesses I've had, different uh, tourism industry associations as well. This is kind of a, a key key recommendation and one that that really is will be key for for a lot of tourist business um, businesses that rely on tourism to to get back up and running after the pandemic. Where probably initially there'd be much reduced revenues, and that that wage subsidy could really be critical in in allowing them to open up much earlier than they would before. Mm -hmm. um, so so that is absolutely something that uh, that is being uh, considered and discussed. But um, but that's kind of the uh, the status of where those negotiations are right now. Great, and and just I think a comment from uh, one of our members, Paul Kenny. Um, oh, where did he go? There he is. Uh, can I please ask that when looking at the wage subsidy and efforts to help sectors affected by tourism directly, that we had considered those affected indirectly? 
While some businesses in Whistler are not dependent on the tourists directly, they are indirectly dependent on the employees, business owners, and residents who are reliant on tourism. <clears throat> we talked about that a little bit when we spoke a couple days ago, is that yes, it was tourism based, but not all businesses are uh, reliant on that tourism sector. <clears throat> so just a, just a comment. Um, then uh, in regards to the to Seb, uh, Seba, uh, I've got to get rid of the, <laughs> the acronyms. Uh, what can be done for business? Oops. You go. What can be done for businesses that do not have a payroll of twenty thousand twenty thousand dollars plus? For example, a smaller business that does not pay out twenty thousand dollars in wages but does as dividends, etc. Well, as, as the emergency business account is currently constructed, that person wouldn't be eligible for it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like I said earlier, those, those are, uh, there's ongoing discussions about how we broaden that eligibility. So, so some of those distinctions, um, or so some of those businesses are not left out to it. Um, but, but currently as it's set up, those businesses wouldn't be eligible, but, but through the community futures and through the economic development agencies, there might be some supports there. Um, but I, but I would stay tuned on the emergency business account. Um, there are, this has been a key demand of, uh, of the rural caucus, um, for where there's a lot of businesses that are, are much smaller than, than having $20,000 a year in, in payroll. And like I said earlier, for, for contractors or, or family run businesses where they pay themselves out through, through dividends, those businesses are, are not eligible right now. And um, we're, we're working hard to make sure that there is the proper supports and access to, to credit for them. Great, uh, we'll take the next two questions and then, uh, we'll do some closing remarks from you if that's okay. Uh, currently, the CERB is divided into uh, four week periods with the next one starting on May 9th. Do we have to wait until the next CERB period starts to rehire our staff under the queues so that we don't have to disqualify them or require them to pay back a portion of CERB? Yeah, I, I would recommend that, that companies, if, if they can, to rehire their, their staff right away. They'll, they'll know now what they're able to access through the uh, doing the calculation with the the announcement from this morning. So, so I, I would recommend those those companies if, if they're able to, to hire those the staff back right away. Um, like I said earlier, there there is a possibility to to um, collect the emergency response benefits while you're furloughed. Um, and so, the key the key that Rachel mentioned is the the objective here is to keep those connections with businesses. And so we're that that's kind of the main principle that that we're operating under. There is going to be a reconciliation down the road, but I I wouldn't um, I wouldn't necessarily be be scared off by that. Um, we're quite aware that this is a, a situation that that many many companies are facing and the major cash crunch that there is right now. Right. Oh, well said. Um, from Pepe Bajas, uh, will there be a ban on evictions for commercial leases during the COVID nineteen period? This will make it easier to negotiate with landlords. Yeah, so um, this is uh, similar to the the um, the rent relief program. Uh, the the um, contracts and the relationship between landlord and tenant falls under provincial responsibility. So um, I can't speak for the the province specifically on this. I know on the residential side there is this this ban on evictions. Um, I um, so I, I would uh, I would direct some of these questions to, uh, to uh, Jordan Sturdy, who I, I believe might be on this call, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but um, um, so I, I can't speak to that directly, but um, um, I, yeah, I would, I would, uh, I would ask uh, Jordan. Okay. Uh, ben Thomas is asking, Patrick, uh, can you comment on the decision criteria and the latest thoughts on a timeline for reopening the border? <laughs> Ooh, that is a that is a, a tough one. I know that right now the the border uh, um, the, the the ban on travel for non essential travel for um, between Canada and the U S that has been extended until um, I think May twentieth. Mm -hmm. So it's I I don't have a a sense of of what's going to happen a month from now. Things are evolving very quickly, <laughs> but um, I I wouldn't necessarily 
um, be holding my breath that that it's going to open in a month, but but it'll be reevaluated as we get closer to there based on on what the 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 um, situation of the pandemic is is on both sides of the border. No, great. I'm going to sneak in one last one from Hillary Davison, and then we'll we'll close it out. If an employee is on CERB and stopped working for a small business, can the small business hire them back for the thousand dollars extra they are allowed to work? Then the thousand dollars would be covered by the wage subsidy. I think we went through that, but maybe just to reiterate again, there's a lot of moving parts and uh, can be a bit confusing. So, so sorry, sorry. Can you repeat that again? Of course. If an employee is on CERB and stopped working for a small business, can the small business, same business, uh, hire them back for the thousand dollars extra they're allowed to work? Then the thousand dollars be covered by the wage subsidy. Um. So yeah, they they could be. They could be furloughed and still collect the emergency response benefit, and then further down the road, um, be able to collect the wage subsidy as well. Um, and and so so that's that's very much possible. Okay, that's great. Um, would you like to uh, have any last words for us today? I know we're going to have you back for sure, but uh, anything that you wanted to cover that we haven't yet done so before we close out for the day? Um, well, I think. Uh, no, I just want to say thanks again for for hosting this, uh, Melissa, and and thanks everybody for the questions. Um, you know, I, I, you know, like I said earlier, there we're we're operating as fast as we can, and and as, as Rachel put it, you know, we're kind of building the the plane on the fly here um, as we fly. So I really appreciate all the questions that everybody has. I can all answer them to the best of my ability, given the information that that I have and um, the status of the the, the um, programs as, as they currently stand. Um, but please do, if you didn't have your question answered today, feel free to reach out to, to me and, and to, to my staff as well. You can reach me at patrick.weiler at parl.gc.ca. Um, I'm happy to, to, um, to answer those questions. And also, I mean, right, right now there's been a key focus on immediate relief. Mm -hmm. um, this is, we're, we're going to get through this eventually. There's going to be some more subsequent steps where we're looking at stimulus and then we're looking at recovery. Mm -hmm. And um, at, at the federal level, we, you know, it's, it's sometimes difficult to develop these programs that are going to um, be properly, um, uh, we'll, we'll be able to properly respond to the different local level um, contexts. So I'm, I'm always very open to suggestions that everybody has here. Um, a great way to do it is to send them through the, the chamber. Um, keep sending me the, the data through the, the mind reader reports on, on the impacts. Um, and I already am hearing great ideas coming out specifically about how we're going to, to get um, uh, more tourists back to, to Whistler and uh, be able to, um, to support a lot of the businesses that, um, that are really reliant on this. So. So please uh, send me your questions, send me your suggestions. I'm happy to do another uh, one of these calls uh, very soon. Great. And, um, and uh, yeah, looking forward to, to, to doing just that. Well, thank you, Patrick. Uh, we'll be sending out an email um, in the next uh, little while, and we'll add your email to it. We'll add the one for the chamber that uh, our members and uh, the larger business community can uh, send their questions to or comments. It'd be very, very, very helpful. Um, once again, Patrick, your efforts for our community and that of the Sea to Sky region have been amazing. Uh, I know that uh, Minister Jolie's office has been in touch with me. Minister uh, Ng's office now has been in touch with me because of the work that you're doing and the suggestion to connect with Whistler. Really appreciate that because it allows us to ask those questions and to be heard at, at, at a high level. And uh, that I'm sure is appreciated by the business community in Whistler. Um, so thank you once again, and uh, we'll definitely uh, be connecting with you soon. Um, before uh, we terminate the uh, web this webinar, um, we are recording these webinars, and I'll be loading them on the Chamber's website, so you can go back to them anytime you want. Uh, go to whistlerchamber.com, and you'll also be able to find this webinar along with other helpful tools that we've been creating over uh, the past few weeks under the COVID-19 webpage. 
Uh, we will continue to stay in connection with you uh, with uh, regular e-news updates, as I said, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, if not more. Um, for our next online event, we're bringing back, for those of you that were there last week, with Shannon Cisco. Uh, she's the CEO and founder of Metronome United, serial uh, entrepreneur, business coach, keynote speaker, and best-selling author to host the second online workshop. We had 130 people in that workshop last week, so thank you for being there. Um, it's next, It's uh, tomorrow, April 22nd, called Map It All Out, Cash People Execution Strategy. This will expand your knowledge for sure about what we're about to step into. <clears throat> and then on Thursday, um, another hot point for our community is leases uh, that are, again, once again, coming up at the end of the month. So we have invited uh, Shalto Shaw from Race & Co. and Pat Kelly, president of the Whistler Real Estate. They will be sharing intel on how to navigate the current COVID-19 issues impacting parties to a commercial lease. So find out the recommendations and strategies uh, that might work for you in dealing with these and other challenges we're facing during this time. So thanks again to... Uh, Patrick and Rachel's gone now, but thank you to both of you for being here today. And uh, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your week. <laughs> thank you, Patrick. Thank you, everybody. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.